come around and stand in front. Okay? No, here, here. He's here. Right here. Take it. I mean, he might change, but if he doesn't change, right here. Okay? Good. Go back to that. Yeah, and we'll be telling you when to come. Good. All right? So you're basically going to be here, holding the book. So let it rest against your chest. And perfect. And then you're going to be close enough so he can easily move it around, adjust it, whatever. And he'll be praying from here. When he's done, just push it. Good.
Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Today's worship aid or program can be found on the cathedral's website at www.stpatrickscathedral.org/live. Our celebrant this morning is Bishop Edmund Whalen. Please now rise and sing our entrance hymn, which can be found in your blue St. Michael's hymnal, hymn number 720, Praise to the Living God. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. A very warm welcome to everyone this morning as we come together and given what's going on in our world, we pray in a particular way for the gift of God's peace, especially in the Middle East where our shepherd Cardinal Dolan is right now seeking to bring aid to those in need there. We welcome this morning among us Bishop Peter, Franz Peter Tabarts von Elst of the Pontifical Council for Evangelization in Rome. A very, very warm welcome to New York's bravest, to all of those from the New York City Fire Department, the greatest fire department in the world. Welcome to the Holy Name Society. We welcome and, and thank the commissioner. We welcome and thank all those who are with us today, Commissioner Kavanaugh, Chief Hodgins, all those who have come from near and far, a particular welcome to all the young ladies from St. Elizabeth Ann Seton High School, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, one of our own, Saint of New York. So welcome home in a certain way to you from Bladdersburg, Maryland, and to all those traveling from near and far. As we come together today, we come to witness the presence of the risen Lord as we hear in today's gospel. We ask pardon for the times we have failed to reflect that presence of the risen Lord in all that we do. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward with confident hope to the, re to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied Pilate's presence, when he then decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised his hand from dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he has announced beforehand through the mouth of all prophets, that his Christ would suffer, repent, therefore be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from first letter to St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is an expiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. This is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see. I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and, and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds 
to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In each of the resurrection appearances, Jesus begins with, peace be with you. And that's very important for us today. We all know the tension in the world. We all know the violence throughout the world, the injustice, and we all know in a very particular and very frightening way, the reality of the violence going on right now in the Middle East, the land of the risen Lord. Our Archbishop, Cardinal Dolan, is there right in the middle of it. And so we ask you to please keep him and all those who are with him in your prayers. As you know, the Archbishop of New York is always the president of the Catholic Near East Welfare Association, which has been providing aid and assistance to people no matter the religion, because we're all made in the image of God and we're all God's children. So the, the, the Catholic Near East Welfare Association now has been providing that aid for decades. And His Eminence is there in Israel in the midst of it all. Today he will be visiting a refugee camp. And he's there to try to promote peace, understanding, and bring the very much needed food and medicine to those in need there. So please keep him and all those with him in your prayers. And we thank you for that. It is fitting that the members of the Holy Name Society of the New York City Fire Department are here with us today. Because I have to be honest with you, you made it easy for me. Because you're the homily. You're what today's gospel is all about. And your presence here today, your willingness to be members of the Holy Name Society, remember the Holy Name Society, be it one of those of the uniform services of our city or the Holy Name Society is in your own parishes. The Holy Name Society goes way, way back, St. Bernardine of Siena. It started because he was trying to bring us understanding that we live the name Christian that we've been given in our daily lives by what we do, by who we are in the ordinary circumstances of our lives. That's why all our parishes have Holy Name Societies. That's why our uniform services, especially here in the city of New York, where so many in the uniform services, express their Catholic faith and their commitment to our service to others through your, what you do each day as members of the department. That's why today you write the homily and you make my job easy. Because what do we see today? What do we see in this? We see what you do every day when you put the helmet on. Now for those of us who are blessed, not just fortunate, but blessing is the hand of God. Blessed to have members of the fire department in our family. One of my brothers has my grandfather's helmet from almost a century ago when he first joined the department. It has an honored place in our family. And you know that that helmet has an honored place in your family, in your life, and really is what today's gospel is all about. Because in today's gospel, Jesus comes to those disciples and they're not sure, they don't know, they don't understand. They're in the midst of listening to the two disciples who met Jesus and were able to recognize his risen presence. Why? In the breaking of the bread, in the Eucharist. It's only in the Eucharist that we are able to recognize the reality of who the risen Lord is which is why it is so important and such an example to all of us that all of you from wherever you are here today and especially the members of the Holy Name Society of the Fire Department, 
because here, we recognize the real Jesus. Now, for those others, they're scared. They don't know. They're not sure. Is it a ghost? Is it a phantasm? Because you see, the risen body of the Lord is indeed his true body. But as Romano Guardini, one of the great theologians in the history of our church, Romano Guardini said, it's a body that has been transformed, not changed, not different, not merely brought back, but brought to what the reality of our lives is all about. Who we are, created in God's image, us all. Who we are called to live that image through the power of the cross. They're not quite sure. They can't figure it out. It looks like Jesus, but there's more. There's more to it than they can quite take in. So Jesus shows them who he is. Because remember, the risen body still has the wounds. That's very important for all of us in these days of Easter to remember. The risen body has the wounds. The resurrection doesn't make the wounds go away, doesn't cover them over. It gives them meaning. It takes those wounds beyond the hurt, beyond the ugliness, beyond the pain, and brings it to the resurrection, to the transformative power of God who recreates all things in the risen Lord. So the risen body has the wounds. And for those disciples who thought that it was just going to make it all better and go away, sometimes that's hard to understand. And sometimes that's hard to believe. So Jesus, in that attempt to make them understand and to help them to meet them where they're at so that they can understand, asks them for something to eat. Practical, simple, real. The resurrection, the resurrection with the wounds. It's practical, it's simple, and it's real. And that's what Jesus challenges you and me to live today. And that's what you do every time you put on that helmet. Let's face it, your helmet right now in the New York City Fire Department, it isn't that much different than my grandfather's was a century ago. Slight alterations, but it's basically the same. Some people in some places may say it's antiquated. It's out of style. It's no longer functional. But you know from every time you've put that helmet on that that not only protects you from falling debris, that it also guides the water away and keeps you safe and able to do why you're there. You know, the biblical understanding of a helmet that helmet of salvation, as we say, as St. Paul so often referred to, relying on the understanding in the Hebrew of the helmet. The helmet is the symbol of the protection of God in our lives. The fact that God shields us from the evil like those embers that may fall and from being drowned in the evil that washes over us like the water coursing down on you as you run into a burning building in a situation where you put your life at risk for the lives of others. The power of the resurrection. That helmet, though, that biblical understanding of that helmet, it isn't just about the protection. It's because of the reality, the confidence, the faith that that helmet symbolizes that the Lord is with us and guides us, it enables you to express your faith. So the biblical understanding of a helmet is just as much an expression of faith that must be lived by what I'm doing as it is the protection of God that gives me the courage and the strength to do it. Your helmet. That helmet that the world may say, oh no, technologically it's not up to speed. That has what is truly needed and is timeless. The protection of God's love that enables you and then enables all of us, following your example, to run into those fiery moments of life, to put our own selves on the line for the service of others as a parent, as a teacher, as anyone who does that for others, as the religious who are with us here today do. 
to put on that protection of the power of the resurrection that brings us here because we've met the Lord in the breaking of the bread, and to live it out in service selflessly to others with the wounds, with the reality of the hurts, the pain, the difficulties of our lives that we bring to the resurrection and draw from them not resentment, not anger, not fear, but the power of the resurrection that takes our own wounds and makes them a source of life for others if we have the courage to put on the helmet of salvation. So, for us today, during these days of Easter as we continue to recognize the presence of the risen Lord anew, as we pray for the safety of the Cardinal and those with him and for peace in the Middle East and throughout the world, as we pray in gratitude and in hope for all those who lay their lives on the line for us each and every day when that bell sounds. This week, take some time with God and talk to God about three things. First, tell God about your wounds. Tell God about those aspects of your life that you carry, that woundedness may be a problem in the family, a difficulty in the marriage, children who've wandered away and become estranged, uncertainty for the future, difficulties about a job, not sure if you can make the rent or the mortgage, wondering if your grandchildren are going to be raised in the faith that's so important to you. Tell Jesus, the risen Jesus, about your wounds. Give them over to him. Give them over to him knowing that the wounds don't go away, but they're brought meaning. They become the source of new life. Second, talk to God about your helmet. Your helmet in particular, the helmet of God's presence that all of us have that brings us here. In the eyes of the world, like the helmet of the fire department, it may be seen as antiquated, an old style, something of the past. But we know it is our present and the only hope for our future. Tell God about you, how your faith with the wounds is your helmet that which keeps the burning embers from burning you and that which courses the water away that might choke you, that which gives you the ability to face the challenges of life every time the alarm seems to ring and lets you continue to give of yourself to others. And then third, be grateful. Grateful to God. Be grateful to the risen Lord for the example and the selfless service of those who serve in the uniform services, those who serve in the New York City Fire Department and in fire departments throughout our country. Grateful for the fact that there are people who are willing to put their lives on the line for us each and every day. The expression of your faith and that so many of you, so many members of the uniform services are our own shows just how timely our Catholic faith is. Thank God also for the wounds in our lives that have been transformed through the power of the resurrection, though they still may hurt, though they still may bleed now and again, though they still get us down, be grateful to God for the wounds that are transformed. And third, be grateful for the gift to the Eucharist because like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, trying to explain the risen Lord in today's gospel. The Eucharist that we celebrate here is where we recognize the risen Lord. And that recognition enables us to put on the helmet of salvation and to respond to the call to serve those around us. We stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As one family of faith, we have the confidence to bring the Father all our needs. For Pope Francis, for our shepherd, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, for all clergy, religious, and laity, that they may be holy and effective in their mission to draw all people to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the culture of life flourish among all peoples of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations and for all those suffering the effects of war, especially in Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of the New York Fire Department Holy Name Society and their families, that they may continue to grow in the grace of God and honor the holy name of Jesus in all they do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fallen firefighters and for all our beloved dead, that they may enjoy the fullness of eternal life let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of your risen life. Help us to place the helmet of salvation firmly among us so that despite our wounds, we may serve you selflessly. Hear our needs and answer them if they are in accord with your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our hymn, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright, 774 in your hymnals.
Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is surely right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have found us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accord with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing our communion hymn, which can also be found in the blue St. Michael's hymnal. Hymn number 426, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
Let us stand and pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by the eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. For our final blessing again, thank you to all for joining us today, those who have joined on the various methods of social media. Welcome again to St. To Patrick's Cathedral, those of you who are with us from a distance here in America's Parish Church. Thank you and again to all the visitors. Bring back the good news. Tell others from home to come and visit us here. It's part of who we are as a family of faith throughout the country. Please keep the Cardinal and all those with him seeking to bring peace and relief in the Middle East. Please keep them in your prayers and world leaders that we may have the good common sense to talk to each other. A particular thank you to the families. It was so good to see so many of you brought your families this morning, those of you in the holy name of the fire department. You know, we owe the families of all those in the uniform services, we owe them a great debt. Not only for the fact that sometimes breakfast is in the middle of the night or the middle of the afternoon, depending on what tour you've been on, not only for the fact that too many holidays and special occasions get, mi get missed because you've got to work, but also for the, that horrible fear when the phone rings and you know he's been on a run and you're scared what that phone call might bring. So thank you to the families. Why don't we thank the families of all those in the uniform services? And thank you, all our brave firefighters, those here present with us, those in the department, those in every fire department throughout our metropolitan area, throughout the archdiocese, and throughout the country. Thank you for laying your, line, your life on the line for us, for being willing day after day to put on that helmet, your helmet of salvation that saves us. Thank you for who you are and what you do. Your courage, your Catholic faith lived out through what you do each day gives the rest of us the courage to do the same. Why don't we thank them and all those who serve? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, qui aque me. Please sing our recessional hymn, which is also in the blue St. Michael's hymnal, hymn number 794. This is the feast.
Thank you.